welcome back to the girly girl bookworm so today i have a currently reading video it is currently may not may wow losing my days today is june 8th um and i thought i would do a currently reading video for you i've read four books so far in the month of june um i know i technically never like made a currently reading video for the end of may but all of those books are included in um, my may wrap up so if you were interested in those i would definitely go check out that video which i'll link up above um, I also just wanted to let you know that I am still 100% supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, so the links will continue to be in my description, um, for resources for you. Thank you so much for those of you who made comments, um, on my last few videos. Um, I really feel like we are able to make the difference that we are by talking. I know it's scary. But the conversations that I've been having the past week or so have been very enlightening. And I feel like we need to keep talking about it. We need to keep making improvements. Um, so I'm very glad that that video has gotten the support that it has. And I hope that we are going to continue doing our part. So let's just get into this video. Um, like I said, I've got four books that I'm going to talk about. The first book that I'm going to talk about is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. You better believe that the minute this showed up in my mailbox, I dropped everything and read this baby all in one day, um, which I'll probably regret because now it's going to be a whole nother year probably before Riley produces anything else, but I had to. I had to. Um, so in this one, we are following our main character, Maggie. Oh, I was right. And she, as a child, her and her family moved into this house, and they only lasted about a month there before they ran away from it, and they got put in the news for this house being haunted and then being basically scared out of this house. Her father ends up getting a book deal and writes a book about what happened in the house, and it's now years later, and she's kind of always, like, had this, like, lurking. Like, people would only be her friend because they wanted to know what happened. Because she was basically a character in this story. And they would only friend her or, like, date her because they wanted to meet her dad. Um, so she's kind of, like, had this, like, hanging over her head her entire life. And now her father has passed away. And she finds out that he's actually left her the house. And she's like, I didn't even know we still owned this house. It's been 25 years, like, why do we still own this house? So she decides because she um, kind of flips houses that she's going to go up to the house and kind of like fix it up and then sell it and get rid of it. But also she wants to get answers because she was five when it first happened and she's got no memory of it. So she's like, if I have no memory of it, my parents are liars because the book that they do publish is a nonfiction book. And she's like, that did not happen. They are liars, and I need to find out if they were telling the truth or if they weren't. Um, so we are following Maggie's perspective, but we're also getting chapters from our father's book. So we're seeing what um, he interpreted happened and seeing her now discovering things. This book was so good. I gave it five stars. Um, it still doesn't take the cake for my favorite just because haunted houses kind of aren't my thing. Like, I much prefer... Um, the last time I lied because I loved, like, the camp element. This one just, it was phenomenal. It was so well done. But at the same time, like, I, it, it wasn't, like, my favorite plot going on. So that's why it's not my new, like, favorite. But I love the twists. I love the turns. Um, again, I love that he's able to do this thing where, like, you're near the end and you're, like, ten pages away and you think, like, okay, this is how it's going to end. And then he like one, two punches you and gives you another twist that you didn't see coming. Um, so I really appreciate that about his writing. It was creepy. It was cringy. I was scared. Um, five out of five stars did not disappoint. So I'm super happy about that. Um, we will continue to love him. Then, um, I made the June TBR where I basically have flipped my TBR kind of upside down to make sure that I'm reading more um, own voices and books that were written um, by black authors. So, so far I've read three. Um, 
So let's just get started. Um, so the first one that I read was Dear Martin by Nick Stone. This is the first book, um, and I guess it's going to be a series. Um, Dear Justice comes out in the fall, which I'm super excited about. Um, this one was also a five-star read for me. We are following our main character, Justice. He is um, going to this private school where he's on scholarship. And um, one night he gets a call from his ex-girlfriend's friend and was like, "My your ex-girlfriend is trying to go drive drunk. Can you go stop her? So he tries to go help her. And a cop sees them and he basically accuses Justice of trying to carjack her. So he puts him in handcuffs, like won't listen to him. And Justice is like, I'm just trying to help her. Like she's like, I know her. And he like the cop wanted nothing to do with it. Um, finally gets cleared up, but like Justice now has this like feelings, obviously. So he ends up starting this project of writing letters to Martin Luther King to kind of be like Martin. What would Martin do? Um, and just really taking a step back, looking at his life, looking at what his friends are thinking, um, the prejudices, the social injustices, um, the systematic, um, the systemic racism that's been going on around him. Um, it brings up a lot of great dialogue and conversation. Um, so I highly, highly recommend this one. Um, and it's a really short read. So for like a short read, this one really packs a punch. And I liked it because it also gave us the internal perspective of justice and seeing how he views the world and watching himself reflect was really beautiful. So um, I can't wait to read um, Dear Justice when it comes out in the fall. I'll probably wait for it to come out in paperback so it can match. But Nick Stone is definitely an author that I will be checking out more from in the future. Then I read Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson, um, and this is a novel that I gave four and a half stars to. Um, this follows a woman named Jade, and she, again, is going to a private school. She lives in, I want to say Portland, but she lives in kind of like the poorer sect of Portland, so she kind of has like the longest commute um, to go to um, school, and she kind of gets put into like all these groups of like SAT prep and the woman to woman club where she gets paired with a mentor and like her ultimate goal one day is to be able to get put on this study abroad trip. That's why she's basically going to the school to get and give her the opportunity to go to another country to experience another culture to be able to help others. Um, and like I said, she gets put into this woman to woman group and she's kind of like, why am I here? I feel like all they want to do is always like fix me and the person that they paired her up with, she kind of butts heads with. Um, but again, it was another really great, accurate portrayal of systemic um, racism and just seeing how her peers didn't always know how to be a great ally to her. Um, she has a good friend named Sam who is white and just seeing how Sam interacts with her and sees injustices happen around her, but not always standing up for Jade. Um, and Jade kind of asking for that support and Sam's response. So again, another one that is filled with great topics, um, to be discussed, um, I thought that this would make a really great kind of like starter to discussion. I saw somebody talk about how this is in their fourth grade classroom and I think that's perfect because it really can get the conversation going. Um, so yeah, this was another beautiful story that I gave four and a half stars to. Really liked the ending, really liked the message of the story. So definitely recommend this one. And she's another one who has a ton of books out too, so definitely we'll be checking her out in the future. And the last one um, is Slay by Brittany Morris. This one I'm giving four stars to, and I feel like the bad thing is it had nothing to do with this book. My headspace by the weekend was just so overwhelmed that like I had migraines and I was really trying to focus on like taking in all the YouTube videos that had started getting posted 
having discussions with family and friends about what was going on. So more my head wasn't like wanting to read because I just wanted to talk and I, and take in um, that way instead of um, reading words on a page. But the words on the page were so important too. So it was hard because I wanted to dedicate time to this, but I also felt like I wanted to dedicate the time to listening and talking things out. So I had a hard time balancing both. So this took me a little bit longer to read than it really should have. This one was a really awesome one too. This one follows Kira and Kira, um, again, goes to a private white school, but she's a little bit different because she does have, um, her family does have money. They're, um, more on the privileged side of things, I would think. Um, the way they describe things, they're not super duper privileged, but they're not like in the poor neighborhood is what I mean. Like they're down the street from the school. Um, so they're a little more well off than um, the characters in the other two novels. Um, she is one of four um, black students in her school. It's her, her sister, her boyfriend, and um, this other girl who is always mentioned, but we've never actually met her. Um, and she secretly runs this, um, virtual reality video game called Slay. And it's basically a place for blacks to come together and kind of show their like black pride. And you can only get into this video game with a code. So basically you have to know somebody to get in. And it's a card game where basically like you... <laughs> We duel with cards, but the cards have to do with black culture, which I thought was really interesting because not only were we learning about the game and the world around her, but we were also learning about, about, oh my goodness, I'm tongue tied today, about black culture through these cards, which was really fun, um, as well. And one night, um, and she does this in secret. Her boyfriend doesn't know about it. Her sister doesn't know about it. Her parents don't know about it. She knows about it as well as her co-creator, obviously, because her co-creator is working with her, but they don't know each other. They they don't even know each other's real names. Um, and one day, a man is on the news for being murdered for trying to do some trading through this video game. So basically, like, killed over the game. And it comes out that there's this game that's only for black people, and a lot of people are trying to target it, saying that it's white discrimination and that you can't just have a club just for black people and that it's racist and she's trying to deal with it in secret because nobody knows that she uh, that she's running this game no one knows that it's her game so she's trying to figure out how to handle it but keep it a secret at the same time and obviously she's dealing with everything around her being um and having these white friends who don't understand her and don't understand this game. Um, but again, it was a really great story. I think it would make a really fun movie. Um, it was giving me kind of Ready Player One vibes a little bit with the whole virtual reality game. But um, I thought this was really fun and I'm glad to see the message that this character received by the end. It was a really great um, message of being able to kind of be proud of yourself and being okay to explain your thinking and your beliefs to others around you because they may surprise you, um, which I've kind of discovered in my own life, um, like surprise you for the positiveness. Like obviously we see the negative of like, I posted that video and lost subscribers, but like there's also positivity with opening up because people, may be thinking the same thing as you and are scared to talk about it or they're going to learn something because you spoke out about something. So, um, again, another really great story with a really great message. So I've had a really, really amazing reading week this past week. I don't know what I want to read next. I was deb debating between The Hate You Give and The Boyfriend Project. I feel like I need a little bit of a different thing because I feel like with the three YAs back to back, it was a little much because I haven't read why in a really long time. So I feel like I need like a little twist of a break to read the boyfriend project before I jump into the hate you give because I don't want to be biased going to the hate you give 
um, just kind of being drained from um, the previous YA novels. Um, but so far, I've been learning a lot, and I'm so glad that I have kind of jumped in head first, feet first. What's that phrase? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I hope that you guys are having a really great reading week, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye, everybody.